All right, guys, to uh, finish uh, going through my rod and reels, um, the next rod and reel that I have, um, this is a six foot six, um, medium heavy, fast action, the Daiwa Procyon rod. Um, it's an IM7 graphite Fuji, um, Fuji uh, guides, um, Fuji reel seat. Um, this particular rod does have the hole through design um, with the exposed blank. Um, this also has, you know, the split grip. Um, and once again, you know, I like the split grip um, and I especially like it because this is a fast action rod and um, I'm typically throwing um, shaky head, Texas rigs or jigs um, with this rod. So the sensitivity is something that you're really looking for, not only in, in a fast tip rod where you can really feel those subtle strikes, but then you can also feel um, those subtle strikes through the blank, uh, down through the handle, where once again, it's really not as important um, when you're fishing a crankbait or a spinnerbait as much as it is, I think, when you're throwing, um, you know, a Texas rig or a shaky head. Um, on this particular rod, uh, I'm using a 12 pound, um, which has kind of been a bit redundant for me, obviously. Uh, but this is 12 pound um, CX Premium P line. Um, the the bait that I'm using on this, I know that you know, looking at it on the camera as you are right now, you you, you probably um, are thinking that this is a jig, um, and and really this is a punch bait. And um, some of you may have seen or heard about punch baits um, lately. Um, but what's really nice about a punch bait is that it really gives the angler the opportunity to really kind of customize their bait a little more. Um, when you go out and you, and you purchase a jig, I mean, you're going to pick the type of jig head that you want. You know, is it a, is it a football jig? Um, you know, is it, is it a more of a swim jig? And that kind of changes the, uh, the head of the jig some. And then you can obviously customize the jig in, in, in the trailer that you put on it. But really, you've got the whole jig and you've got the weight. With a punch jig, um, you, you can really customize this a lot more. You can pick the weight that you want to use. Um, obviously, um, typically the reason why you go to a punch jig is because you're wanting to punch through vegetation. And you want to get through it with, um, with less resistance than what a typical jig is going to have. So you want it to be really more narrow. Um, you want to have enough weight, but you want to get that through the, the mat that you're throwing in, the weeds, the grass that you're throwing in, and a punch bait, you know, really does do that for you. Um, what's also important when I do a punch bait is that you want to peg, you want to peg the weight. And what pegging the weight means is that you don't want that weight to slide up and down the line which is what it typically does when you're fishing a Texas rig and you're doing it unpegged. Um, so think about that for a second. If you're fishing this and you're throwing it through any type of, of grass, any type of a mat, and you're wanting to get this through, if you don't punch the weight, what happens is, is the hook or, or the plastic behind it can get caught up in the mat and then the weight will end up sliding through. And so basically what ends up happening is, is your weight slides down and takes line with it, but yet the bait itself is still sitting up in the mat. So I like to punch it and, and punch the weight. And the easiest way to do it is I'll always carry some toothpicks and it's in my terminal um, box, um, my, my terminal tackle box. And um, I'll take a toothpick and uh, I always carry a, a little sharp uh, paring knife that's in my Falcon FTO bag. And I'll, I'll just really quickly sharpen uh, the tip of that toothpick. I'll push it down into the tip of the weight and then I'll break it off. And so what's inside of here right now is there's a little piece of toothpick that's in there and that punches it so that if I put this rod upside down like this, you'll notice that the weight does not slide down the line. I can still pull this, I can still move it, but the reality of it is, is that it doesn't really move freely on its own. Um, 
this is a punch skirt so once again this skirt you know kind of like any skirt that you're going to use um but i like it because it also has a couple of like longer um uh almost like claw you know crawfish claws that are that are hanging from it um pick whatever you know your favorite hook is you know and when you buy a jig in many cases you just get whatever hook that they use so i'm using a wide gap gamagatsu hook and then i'm using one of my favorite soft baits you know for fishing um, as a jig trailer i've got a gene larue who daddy which is kind of like a little creature bait slash you know crawfish type of a bait in this particular um setup the color is really you know kind of watermelon um seed um the skirt is kind of like a texas craw um skirt because it's got you know it's got pumpkin it's got watermelon it's got some black so it kind of gives you um, a, a bunch of different colors that are in it um and uh, this is a larger profile bait this obviously is a, is a larger profile bait um if the water clarity um is 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 pretty clear which where i fish at lake grapevine the water clarity is never really clear but there are some times where you don't have rain for a while the water will get you know as clear as it's going to get on lake grapevine and then i will go to a a watermelon um smaller profile jig with a much smaller trailer so that jig will get through the water um, strike zone faster, which doesn't give, you know, doesn't give the, the bass enough time to really look at it and determine that it's not really, um, uh, you know, something that he wants to eat. And really that's what you're doing. Um, when, when the water's clear, um, you typically want to go to a smaller profile jig and, um, and you're going to want to go with more of a natural color um, when the water is clear. Um, the reel that's on this rod is a Daiwa Procyon reel. And what's really interesting is Daiwa does a lot of matching rod and reels where they design a, a reel specifically for a rod series. And of course, you, you saw that already, already where I have some Procaster rods with Procaster reels. And you're going to see that on another rod and reel I'm going to show you in a minute. But this Procyon really was very similar to uh, a Procaster um, reel that they had at the time, but in North America, there was no such thing as a Procyon. And what was interesting was Daiwa came out with the Procyon series rod before they ever had the Procyon series reel. And today, um, Daiwa does have a Procyon spinning reel. They don't have a Procyon baitcaster yet. I would imagine if they follow the same strategy that they always have, they'll probably come out with one. But I ended up buying this reel I think I got it on eBay and um, it was a reel. Like I said, the Procyon was not a reel that was for sale in the U.S. market. Um, and I ended up finding it and I was like, you know, yeah, I'll buy it. And so very similar to at, at the time, um, there was a, a, a real version called the Procaster X. And I, of course, I showed you the Procaster Z, but the Procaster X really was a lot like this. Um, in terms of, of setup. Um, once again, uh, six three to one gear ratio, um, um, aluminum, you know, aluminum uh, frame, uh, does have a composite, I think it has a composite side plate on this, aluminum handle, um, really good drag system, uh, MagForce Z, uh, magnetic brakes, um, really a, a, a good reel for the money. And once again, um, you know, this rod is probably my favorite um, uh, worming and jigging rod um, of all my rods. And it certainly is not, it's not my most expensive. But I think when this combination of rod and reel, once again, does not break the bank. And, um, and it's really hard to beat this, this rod and reel. As I said before, I mean, Daiwa typically has where they like to have a matching rod and a matching reel. Um, this is a six foot six medium heavy fast action Team, Di uh, team Daiwa Tierra rod um, with a matching Team Daiwa Tierra reel. Um, same action as the other rod. It's also an IM7 um, blank Fuji guides, Fuji reel seat. Um, this rod does have the hole through design. Uh, the big difference is on this rod, 
is that it does have a solid cork um, uh, rear handle um, butt and uh, this rod is a little a little heavier than the other rod um, so it, it doesn't feel quite as nimble as the Procyon does but um, it also feels like a stronger rod so I'll typically throw bigger football jigs with this um, you'll see that right now on this rod I have uh, a traditional black and blue football jig. Um, I have a large Jean LaRue um, soft bait trailer. And, and once again, when you're fishing uh, dirtier, uh, murky um, water, um, you want that bait to, to drop um, slower. And that gives, um, gives more time for the bass to find the bait. Uh, so once again, if I'm going to be fishing, in most cases, uh, the water clarity of the lake where I fish is really stained um, going to a black and blue going to a, um, a jig that has a larger trailer that's going to uh, basically make that jig sink at a slower rate um, is really what you're looking for um, the real uh, team Iowa tierra this is probably um, the most expensive reel that i have and um, you know i like it a lot but um, it's also a reel that I've had a problem with. So uh, this particular reel, um, the only thing I, that I've had the problem with, with this reel is that uh, occasionally on the cast, you'll hear a clicking noise. And with messing with the Mag 4Z, that clicking noise will go away. Um, and uh, I've never taken it to the shop and had anyone look at it or anything. But, uh, but once again, most expensive reel that I have, it's a Team Dio, a Tierra reel. Um, I do like the reel a lot, low profile, lightweight, 6.3 to 1, a great click drag system, uh, perforated aluminum spool. I mean, it's got all of the, the nice uh, Daiwa features and functions, um, you know, that, that you're looking for. And it's, it's with a matching uh, Team Daiwa uh, Tierra rod. Um, the next... Uh, the next rod that I have, and I kind of moved on to the spinning rods, um, this is a, a six foot, um, medium lightweight, fast action, Daiwa Procaster uh, spinning rod. And what's um, different about this rod that you, know, you haven't seen on any of the other ones is that it uses a, a Daiwa a Dynaflow guide system. And um, actually, uh, I, I had these guides on a rod many, many, many years ago on a, on a saltwater rod a Daiwa VIP rod. I still have that rod today and I really like those guides. So when I saw this rod and I saw the Daiwa Dynaflow guides, I was like, cool. And, um, and so I bought it. But uh, this, uh, this rod being that it's a medium light, um, I'll throw small Texas rig um, um, uh, worms. Um, I'll throw a smaller shaky head. Um, uh, I'll throw, uh, you know, smaller jerk baits with this. Uh, because it's medium light, I can throw I can throw um, a lot of of, of lighter uh, baits with it, uh, and you certainly don't want to throw something that that's heavy um, that's going to put a lot of uh, pressure on the rod. Um, so you want to go lighter with this. And um, so on the uh, the line uh, that I've got on this rod is actually a 10 pound um, uh, uh, P line CX premium. And the reel is uh, a Daiwa Ondine series reel. Um, they came out with the, what was called the Hard Body Z series. And um, really they made several different models in the, uh, the hard body. And, and back at that time, most uh, of the reel manufacturers that were out there, a lot of them were composite body with aluminum spool, aluminum crank, but the actual frame was composite. Um, so, uh, it was really, in my opinion, they were like the first to come out with that really low profile um, aluminum um, frame. And other reels that did have aluminum frame were a lot larger. Um, so, you know, once again, I think Daya was, was really one of the first to come out with this type of design. And today, a lot of reel companies have come out with a design very similar to, to this. This reel, um, Daya also came out with a sizing a chart, which was the 500, the 1,000, the 1,500, 2,000, 2,500, 3,000. And it was really Daiwa's way of coming out with a sizing 
chart for their spinning reels. And because back at that, you know, when, when they first came out, you know, they were competing with, you know, real companies like um, Penn or, you know, Fluger or Shakespeare. And, you know, they, they really didn't have a, a, a anything similar to the, the sizing chart that Dioe used. Now today, a lot of real companies are using that same sizing, 1500 size, 2000, 2500. Dio is the one who really created that first. The 2500 series, the real quick way to really kind of kind of understand it is that the 2500 series has a larger handle um, than what a 2000 series does. The 2000 series has a smaller grip. The 2500 also has a larger spool, so it does give you more line capacity. This reel, you know, it, it is not a real fancy reel, and uh, in my opinion, it was the best. Um, value of all of the hard body Z reels that Daiwa came out with because um, you weren't paying for a bunch of things that you didn't need. Um, very, very straightforward. This reel, I will take off of this rod and put it on a seven foot Daiwa coastal rod and uh, do some inshore fishing with it as well. So it's a very versatile reel. The next um, spinning rod that I have is another six foot um, spinning rod. This is a Team Daiwa light and tough um, rod. Uh, this is a medium heavy fast action. One of my favorite rods of, of all my rods. Um, I will use this um, for throwing shaky heads, um, uh, slightly larger Texas you know, weighted worms. Right now this rod is rigged as a drop shot rod. So if you look at it here, uh, this is rigged as a drop shot rod, and um, if I was going to um, exclusively fish um, drop shots, um, I would probably have a six foot three um, medium uh, to medium light rod, uh, extra fast action tip, but I really don't drop shot a whole heck of a lot, so I just try to get by with one of the rods that I have. So once again, it kind of gets back to how many rods do you need? Well, if I fish drop shots a lot, I would have another rod specifically for that. But I really don't fish the technique all that much. Um, but right now, um, it's still winter. The water temperature is you know, 53 to 55 degrees. And drop shotting is one of the ways to get to those fish. Um, you know, really nice rod, black and gold, um, you know, Fuji guides. Um, this is a this is a exclusive Daiwa um, real seat. The top unscrews, so you know you're not actually unscrewing a, a, a real seat. Um, actually, the whole top of the rod right here, this unscrews and and the, and the reel fits in. So this is a custom design that Daiwa has made on their on their uh, on the real seat um, premium cork handle. This rod I've had for many many years, and you could see that. Um, it, it may not be considered, you know, premium Portuguese cork, um, but it really is a good quality cork. But you could see where some of the, the fillers have come out over the years. And typically when you start uh, getting into cheap cork, uh, it'll have more fillers, as I said before, and you'll see a lot more holes in the cork. Um, so this is actually pretty good quality cork. Um, the real is a Team Daiwa Advantage. This is the 2000 series size. So as I said, it has a smaller grip, which I like better for freshwater fishing. My favorite size in a freshwater spinning reel is the 2000 series size. It's my preference. Um, this is also built on the Hard Body Z frame. Um, this is a more expensive reel than the Ondine, um, but one, you know, once again, um, you really can't go wrong with an ondine reel. Um, the team, uh, the Team Daiwa Advantage series, uh, is is a great reel, um, and it's the perfect size. And uh, once again, this is set up for drop shotting right now. But when I want to throw um, a centipede, a Texas rig centipede, or I want to throw a small shaky head, you know, this is one of my go-to rods. Last but not least, and this is last, um, this is an all-star six foot um, medium light fast action rod. So really it's the same weight 
the same action as the Daiwa Procaster, the first spinning rod that I showed you. But what's interesting about this is that even though this is a medium light like the other one, this rod has a little less backbone than what that Procaster does. So it has a little more flex to it. And um, this is an all-star classic, American classic, like the very first bait casting rod that I showed you. This rod is made in the USA, it was made in Houston, Texas. And, you know, once again, it is one of the original um, all-star rods. And I typically will use this for throwing um, wacky rigs. Um, this is a, uh, a wave um, tiki stick. Um, I've got an O-ring on it. Uh, whenever I wacky rig, and unless I'm out of O-rings, um, I use an O-ring, and then I'll put a, a, a weedless circle hook um, through that O-ring. And the reason why you do that is, is you just lose a lot less worms. Um, if you're going to put that hook through this worm, you know, almost, you're, you're probably going to lose that worm on, on every fish that you catch. So I like to use the circle hook because it doesn't rip this worm up. Um, so it, it does work. Uh, and you can actually find these. Uh, when I first started going with these, I couldn't find them anywhere at like a, a tackle store or at any of the large, you know, uh, fishing retail stores. I won't name names, but they didn't have these. So uh, I was going to like Home Depot or Lowe's and was buying a packet of O-rings and just pulling out the small ones and throwing away the large ones just because I like using them. Um, this is the only Fluger um, spinning reel that I have. And uh, as you can tell, I'm very much a Daiwa guy on my reels. Um, I only have the one Fluger bait caster, which is the president. And then I've got one Fluger spinning reel, um, which is a medalist. And uh, I would highly recommend this reel. Unfortunately, um, Fluger does, does not make this reel anymore. I think it was a big mistake. Um, the reason why I bought this reel is because I really felt like it was the best value reel um, when I bought it. Uh, it was an all aluminum reel, aluminum, uh, aluminum frame, aluminum handle, aluminum spool. And it's got a 10 bearing system. Um, and, uh, you know, it's fairly lightweight. Um, it's the, like I said, it's the first Fluger spinning reel that I've ever purchased. And actually, um, you know, with the exception of my very first spinning reel, which was a pen 720Z, I still have it sitting here on my shelf. But this was my first spinning reel that I ever had. But really, um, every reel that I've owned since that pen spinning reel has been a Daiwa. And and um, though over the years uh, for my boys, you know, you know, I they had a couple of you know cheaper Shimano's and whatnot. Um, every reel's been a Daiwa, and this is the only reel spinning reel that I've had other than a dial and it's the metalist and um, you know unfortunately uh, companies make decisions they they discontinue a model they come out with other ones and in the same price range um, the reel that you would buy today that would basically replace this is a composite bodied reel and uh, I will pick uh, an aluminum reel over a composite bodied reel any day of the week it's going to last longer it holds up to, to, to loads and stress um, a lot more, a lot better than that of a composite body reel. I think a composite body reel feels good when it's new, but after you use it for a while, um, it just, it doesn't feel the same. It doesn't have the same quality feel, in my opinion, of an aluminum bodied reel. Um, just my opinion. Now, this is the only rod that I don't have a spooled with P-line. I was fishing in Lake Fork. And I really don't use this rod a whole heck of a lot. It depends on the time of the year because, um, you know, when I'm throwing a small jerk bait or a wacky rig, it just isn't something that I typically use as much. And uh, I went to Lake Fork and I had some old line on it. I got out there in the water and sure enough, I decided I needed to throw a wacky rig and my line was shot. So the next morning I got up earlier, actually that night, they let me into the tackle store at um, – at uh, uh, the marina that I was at, and I bought a packet of vicious um, six pound fluorocarbon. So this is the only rod that I've got true 100% fluorocarbon on, and I really like it a lot. Um, I'm definitely going to try it on 
one of my bait casters and see if I like it as much on a bait caster as I do on the spinning rod. But um, I really do like this line a lot and I'd highly recommend it. And that's the Vicious uh, fluorocarbon line. Um, so that's it for my rod and reels. Um, and uh, video part three will be on um, my Falcon FTO and my uh, hardened soft baits and terminal tackle. Thanks.